Hi there, welcome back. Today we're going to talk a bit about MOSFETs and uh, how we're going to use them and especially how we're not going to use them. <laughs> of course we're going to do a little setup where we're going to play with a MOSFET and a LED to see how it works and how it not works. This is a EIRF 520 from a company called Vishay. Uh, this is a N-channel MOSFET. It's also known as a power MOSFET. And there's many different types of MOSFETs, but this is just the one I had, so this is the one we're going to go through right now. First thing you need to do is identify what legs are doing what task. And you also need to know uh, the current, the limits, and uh, how much voltage it takes to control the system on this MOSFET. This particular one, I know how the legs are configured. The one over here is a source, the middle one is a drain, and the one over here is the gate. And it works just like logic in reverse. This gate over here allows this MOSFET to control the flow between the other two legs, meaning it works as a electronic potenti potentiometer. Yeah, a variable resistor. You can also use it as a relay or as a sort of memory because it remembers its last date if it's turned off or powered off. So this thing has a lot of uses. Uh, and it's replacing traditional transistors in almost every electronic component everywhere. Uh, don't worry about the size, because they can get as small as you want, just like any other electronic component. I'm not sure if this is the largest size you can get your hands on, but it's close to, at least. When hooking up, MOSFETs like this. You have to think of electronic flow in a scientific way, not in traditional way. Traditional is where ele electrons flow from plus to minus, but from minus to plus. And uh, we're going to show this in a experiment. We're going to put this on a breadboard and we're going to power a LED on and off and we're going to test both ways, so you can see how this particular MOSFET works. And this is a N-channel power MOSFET. You can also get P-channel power MOSFETs. They work the other way around. So it really depends on what you need. Of course, they have a different number and different name depending on their function. So if you wanted the inverse of this, I think you want something called IIF 9520 or something like that. They added a 9 in front. I'm not 100% sure the opposite of this, but it's something like that. Google it. So, the first thing we want to do when getting our hands on this is of course reading the name and number, putting it into Google, and when we do that, we end up with something like this. No, not that. This. <laughs> this is the data sheet for the IIF 520, also the SIHF 520. And we can read different things of it. We can read operating temperature, and that's the maximum, right? Fast switching, easy parallel. We can read the RDS on value, 10 volts. Hmm, voltage, drain source voltage, 100 volts, okay, okay. And we can read all sorts of interesting things. What's really important is uh, the RDS on values, which is needed to switch the gate. However, the one I'm holding here is a uh, logic level meaning it can be turned on by very low voltage or off of course if you get the non-logic level you need a higher voltage to turn it on and off 
logic level means I can use a Arduino to turn it on or off, but it also means that static electricity such as my fingers will turn it on and off. So we got a good thing, we can control it with a microprocessor, but also a bad thing, it's static sensitive and it's very very static sensitive and uh, I'll show you that in the video in a minute. The non-logic level of course requires a higher voltage to just enable the, gain, the gate at all. Uh, I think this one enables the gate from 4.5 volts and all the way up to uh, 16 or something, 16 volts. While uh, the non-logic starts at 12 volts and is not as sensitive to static electricity as this one. So depending on your application, choose the right MOSFET. Okay, so let's uh, let's do the experiment. Welcome back to the experiment this time. I have a Arduino. The Arduino will only be used as a power source, so we're only going to use the power. I got some wires, mixed wires. I got a resistor, 220 ohms, and I got a LED. This is the cooling block I was talking about. We're not going to use that because we are driving it from the Arduino and it will never reach uh, enough amperage to get hot. Then I got my two uh, MOSFETs and we're just going to place one of them on the breadboard right away. Going to pull it a bit up and flip it over so you can see it. And then we talked about the ports, so it's gate, drain and source, meaning you should supply the voltage to the source. But if you want to utilize uh, the logic functionality, you will supply the voltage to the gate. No, sorry, uh, drain. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hook up our LED on the drain like this. And then I'm going to put on a resistor from the LED to the plus bar. It's on the plus. And then I'm going to take a black wire from the source and put down on the black or ground wire. Then I'm going to take a black wire over here and ground it to the Arduino ground. And the reason I'm doing it in reverse is because I'm doing the circuit in a non-conventional direction. Conventionally, you would say that the power flows from plus to minus. Mathematical, you would go the other way. It doesn't really matter because either way, the result is the same when working with electrical circuits. The only difference is you will have a plus or a minus sign at the end of the result, or in front of the result, of course. Uh, the plus and the minus sign indicates the direction of the current and is therefore not important. But it's important to know when working with the MOSFETs, especially the power MOSFETs. I'm going to hook up the orange cable to the gate, but I'm not going to plug it into anything. If I wanted to, this is the one I would put into a Arduino port to turn this thing on and off. I got a separate white wire, which I'm going to place on ground right here. So, right. And finally, we're going to put the red one into Arduino 5 volts. There we go. So now everything is hooked up, but there's no light in the LED. And that's because the MOSFET, remember, the last time I used it, it was turned off. It was in an off state. It has a memory, but it's a mechanical memory. So it will always remember. If I touch the orange wire, which I'm going to now, you can see it starts to flash. 
if I'm going to touch it really hard, it's on. And as long as I hold it, it's on. It's flickering. That's because I'm a bad connection. If I let it go, it stays on. If I touch it again, it just flashes and randomly it's on or off. As you can see. That really just... F on my side it's about luck, but in reality it's whether or not I'm pulling this high or low. If I grab this white wire really tight, I'm actually going to press it into my skin really hard. I can't turn it on anymore. You can see I'm touching it, but nothing is happening. That's because my potential is actually grounded now. So I have zero potential, meaning I can't turn this on. If I let it go, it works again. You can see my right hand, I'm able to turn it off. Not the left hand. If I let go of the white wire, I can again. And that's how it works. Now instead, if we were going to control this electronically, we would use the orange in one of these pins or over here. And we will simply pull it high or low. Some of the MOSFETs works at, as uh, potentiometers and are able to regulate the amount of current running through. But then you need the heatsink because it would, in theory, turn on and off a lot, just like a voltage regulator. And that would produce heat, not much at 5 volts and below 1 amp, but still heat. Uh, the heat could be enough to melt the casing and that's why we cool it, but even worse, it could uh, damage the, ins the circuits inside the MOSFET. That's basically it. Now, one thing I'd like to show you before we stop. Let's remove this. Let's reverse the circuit. So. I'm going to take out my LED, I'm going to take out the resistor, and I'm going to place the resistor up into the drain. I'm going to take out the ground, I'm going to place the LED the other way around, so it goes from, from a drain to the resistor and into ground before we had it reversed. So, now I'm going to power the MOSFET this way, through the source. Notice it's on right away. I can't turn it off. Even if I put this straight into ground, nothing is happening. Meaning, the only way I can turn this off now is by pulling the power. That is another way you can tell you have hooked this up wrong. Even though it seems logical to put the plus into the drain, sorry, the source, it's wrong. It's not going to work with these power MOSFETs. You can get some where it will work, but the IRF520, it won't. It's as simple as that. Now you may wonder, do I break it by doing this? No, it's fine, nothing will happen. Feel free to experiment with low voltage. But if you're going to use the voltage in the diagram, sorry, the data sheet, uh, you may damage the device. A low voltage, it's fine. So, comments on this, please uh, leave them below in uh, the description. All right, well, that was simple, right? This one saw it how it worked, saw how we can turn it on and off, and we got an idea on how we can use these. Except we just used it as a relay, really. We didn't really utilize its full potential. We didn't go in and say, let's put 50% voltage on the gate and use it as a resistor. We could have used this as a resistor instead of the one we actually used. Saving a component, right? So, this is a very smart device.
It's not smart in the way it's intelligent, it's smart in the way you can use it. And applications are limitless. And these are found in almost all electronics around the world today. In different sizes, of course. But always remember, read the component data before before use, okay? Find the data sheet, check the voltages before hooking it up. Don't be that guy that buys things off the internet and just hook it up to 12 volt and watch the blue smoke go out. That would be sad. Comment rate below. Uh, next time, we're actually going to work with some chips. And uh, let's see if I can get this one off. No, I got an old project right here. And we're going to work with our first integrated circuit. And uh, let's see, it's called a... Nope, that's not the one I want to work with. There we go. SN74HC595. Properly known as the 595 chips. So, next time we're going to... That's actually a small project. We're going to work with the 595s and we're going to turn things on and off and see how they work electronically and how these chips are important in modern electronics. So, see you next time. Bye.